everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Alex and today I am bringing you some feel good recommendations. So with all that's been going on in the world lately with this COVID-19 pandemic, a lot of us are in kind of a state of limbo. We don't really know what our lives are going to look like as this situation continues to develop and it can be a really scary and difficult time for a lot of people. And if you do choose to continue reading during this time, I know Reading takes a lot of brain power and some people feel that they can't do that. It gives them anxiety to continue when they're so stressed out in the first place. So if you're not reading during this time, first of all, just don't put any pressure on yourself. Take every day as you need to take it. But if you do choose to read during this time, you might be looking for just some feel good, fun, light recommendations to take your mind off of the state of things. And that's what today's video is all about. So all of these books are books that are really close, near and dear to my heart. You've probably heard of all of them, may have read some of them already, but they just made me smile, made me laugh, don't have as many serious elements involved. So it's something that you can fly through really quickly and just something to hopefully help lift your spirits up. So before we get into today's video, if you're new here and you're not already, be sure to go down and hit the subscribe button as well as the bell icon down below so that you never miss out on any of my content. And without further ado, let's get started. So the first book that I'm going to talk about today is The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. Now The Unhoneymooners was one of my favorite books of 2019 as I know that it was for so many people, but if you don't know about it already, it follows our main character Olive and Olive has a twin sister who's getting married. So Olive is the maid of honor and she absolutely hates the best man who is the groom's brother. His name is Ethan and they have always hated each other and they expect to continue in that fashion but at the wedding reception everybody except for Olive and Ethan gets sick with food poisoning and Olive's sister is not able to go on her non-refundable honeymoon trip to Hawaii because she is sick so she winds up offering the non-refundable trip to Oahu to Olive and Ethan and they have to pretend to be married even though they can't stay in each other and it turns into this hilarious rom-com hate to love romance. I've read a few different things from Christina Lauren in the past and this one is by far my favorite one from them. I listened to this one on audiobook when I read it and I loved doing it that way. It really felt like I was listening to a movie play out. Some of these scenes are just like laugh out loud hilarious. This completely lifted my spirits and I think that it's perfect for this time. The next book that I'm going to talk about is Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. Now this is another one that was on a bunch of people's favorites list from last year. It completely took the world by storm and for good reason. This book follows our main character Alex who is first son of the United States. His mother was elected president right after Obama left the administration and he has a beef with Henry who is the crown prince of Wales and Alex's mother thinks that them not getting along looks really bad for her re-election campaign that's coming up. So Alex and Henry are forced to pretend to be friends and then they do wind up becoming friends and becoming more than that. So again, this is one that I think a ton of people have already gotten to by now, but I just absolutely loved it. I don't think it can be overstated how wonderful this book is. Now, this is definitely not the most lighthearted book in the world. There's a lot of political commentary in there and definitely some, some sadder moments, but in general, the book leaves you with such a feeling of hope and the romance in here is adorable. And so overall, it is very uplifting and positive. Like I said, there are just a couple little small, more serious issues in there. Not even anything I would say that's really sad, just more serious. So if you're looking for something that is romantic and fun while still being grounded, I think this is a really good pick. The next one I'm going to talk about is Tweet Cute by Emma Lord. And this was a 2020 release that I was lucky enough to receive early through NetGalley. This is one that a lot of people have really been loving so far this year and again for good reason. This is a very cute YA contemporary that follows our two main characters Pepper and Jack. They both live in New York City and they work for opposing restaurants. So Pepper's family's restaurant is a national chain. It has blown up, exploded and Jack's family's restaurant is a little family owned joint and Jack's restaurant winds up accusing Pepper's restaurant of stealing one of their recipes. So Pepper Pepper and Jack wind up getting involved in this Twitter war that goes viral and then everybody across the internet starts shipping these two but really they can't stand each other so it turns into again I hate to love romance. I really enjoyed just the feel of this one overall. It definitely felt really grounded and really realistic to what high school seniors would really how they would really think and what they would be worrying about so I really appreciated it because of that. The characters are definitely still mature but they're not overly so. They still do act like teenagers so I just appreciated that in general. I felt like their relationship was so cute and it just came together so well. So again, this is one that is laugh out loud funny, just 
the perfect blend of everything that you could want. It's funny, there's a couple little more serious things, and the romance is everything you want. So this is a short, quick one that is just perfect for making you feel good. Next, I'm gonna talk about The Bookish Life of Nina Hill by Abby Waxman. Now, this one, when I tell you the premise of it, does not exactly sound like it's going to be a fun, feel-good read, but it definitely turned out that way for me. So this book follows our main character, Nina Hill, and she grew up as the only child of a single mother. She is now an adult, and she has her life exactly the way that she likes it. It's very small and simple, and she is totally okay with that. She works at a bookstore. She goes to trivia night every week with her friends. She has a cat that that's her only roommate, and she just loves her life the way that it is. Well, one day she gets informed that the father that she never knew has passed away and has included her in his will. And he has this whole extended family, this big gigantic family that she never knew about. And now she has to go and meet them and try to reconcile what that's going to mean versus how she likes her life. Now, this is one where I 100% related to the main character. I, In my opinion, just to me, she is one of the most relatable characters that I have ever read. I saw myself in her so much and loved being on the journey with her. There were laugh out loud moments in this one as well. And going throughout the novel, one thing I really appreciated was you would see every day as the book went on, Nina's to-do list. And she would write little side notes to herself in her to-do list. And I thought that was a really special touch and it was really funny so that just added even more to it. Again with all these there are a few little emotional moments but nothing that's too sad. Overall this is just a really really fun one that has gotten quite a bit of hype on booktube in the last year or so but I still don't think that it's gotten enough. So if you are a fan of A Man Called Uwe and Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine add this one to your wheelhouse. I think that you'll really enjoy it. It wouldn't be a feel-good books list without mentioning something by Morgan Matson, and specifically I'm going to talk about The Unexpected Everything. Now The Unexpected Everything follows our main character Andy and she is a politician's daughter and she feels like she has everything for the summer planned out. She's going to have the best summer of her life. She's really excited. She's going to be going away to this really important internship and she is just ready to go. But all of a sudden her father and his office wind up getting into a really big political scandal and he thinks that it is in her best interest that she does not leave for the summer. So now she is stuck at home with her dad. They don't have the best relationship and Andy has nothing to do over the summer. And she winds up getting a job as a dog walker and chaos ensues from there. She meets cute boy, there's family relationship stuff, yada yada. Now I think that all of Morgan Matson's books are just really heartwarming and fun and just the perfect kind of summer reads. I know it's not quite summer yet, but these are the kind of books that are like quintessential YA contemporary. I just love every single one of them. This one is so fun. I love the relationship between Andy and her love interest Clark. She makes a ton of awesome friends. She has an interesting relationship with her dad that you get to follow and who doesn't love reading a book about dogs? So this one was just so cute and I loved it so much. I also want to talk about Since You've Been Gone, also by Morgan Matson. This is another one of hers that is really, really feel good. One of my favorites. It follows our main character, Emily, and Emily's best friend is Sloane. And Sloane is the one that has always made Emily get out and do things in the world. Emily would be perfectly content just staying to herself and having a small existence, but Sloane really pushes her out of her comfort zone. And one day Sloane just disappears. She up and vanishes. Emily has no idea where she went, but Sloane has left Emily this bus bucket list of things that she needs to do over the summer to try to push her out of her comfort zone and the book follows Emily trying to check off everything off of this list. Now this is another one again quintessential YA contemporary and in that vein it is if you are a big fan of the YA contemporary genre I feel like this one is a little bit predictable but that is okay. There is nothing wrong with having a predictable book and I did not enjoy this one any less just because I figured out what was going to happen. Loved it. Love the characters. Love everything about it. Just in general if you're looking for feel good pick up Morgan Matson. I'd say that her darkest one that I've read so far at least is Second Chance Summer but any of the rest of them sound like like they would be adorable and perfect to bring you up. And the last book that I'm going to talk about today is Love and Gelato by Jenna Evans Welch. Now this book follows our main character Lena and she is 16 at the beginning of the novel. She's living with her mother. She's never known her father and her mother has been really really sick and she winds up passing away towards the beginning of the novel and Lena finds out that it is her mother's dying wish for Lena to spend the summer in Tuscany 
learning who her real father was and spending the summer with him, getting to know him and building a relationship with him. So she is very, very hesitant and skeptical to be going there. She has never met this man, doesn't know anything about him, and she definitely holds a grudge against him for not being there for her whole life, but she's willing to give it a chance. So she has this incredible summer in Tuscany and things go from there. Now, this is another one that, again, within the YA contemporary genre was a little bit predictable. I did see some things coming, but not a problem for me at all. This was adorable. I absolutely loved the setting, and I think that Jenna Evans Welch absolutely nailed what it feels like to be in Italy. It was wonderful and atmospheric, and the relationships were great. Friendships were great. We get a lot of character development in Lena. Just phenomenal in general for a YA contemporary, and if you do read it and decide that you like it, just Jenna Evans Welch also has a second book called Love and Luck, which is set in Ireland. I haven't read that one yet, but I'm definitely looking forward to it. And she's coming out with a third book called Love and Olives that's coming out in July, and that one is set in Greece. So if you do decide that you like this one, maybe you can pick one up in May and then June and then July. Who knows? But regardless, this is a perfect one if you're looking for a good pick-me-up. So that is it for today's video. Let me know what you thought in the comments down below and let me know some of your favorite feel good reads. As always, if you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to go down and give it a big thumbs up as well as hitting the subscribe button and the bell icon down below so that you never miss out on any of my content. So until next time, bye.